Hello everyone, it's me, Captain Blueberry Buckaroo, aka Lancer737, and today I'm going to be visiting People's Equestrious, maybe doing a theory or two, and just talking about part of my favorite things in G4. And, um, I just thought you guys should know, I'm sorry that I have not been visiting my neighbors lately. For the last two days I've been helping with physical therapy. I, I was just so worn out, and it would be late at night, and I just felt like just playing some um, MLP games instead of visiting sorry about that but we're gonna do that now and i hope everyone's having fun with the campaign this is one of the few campaigns that i really really loved even though it was limited time and it's pretty cool that princess luna technically helps you i just wish you could actually see her when she's helping instead of being like yep you got luna's power she's helping you and it's like well where is she? she's like she's in a different universe but trust us she is helping I don't know, maybe that in the th is a theory in itself. Maybe they didn't really go into the comic book realm. Maybe they went into a chaotic, random, dangerous fragment of the dream realm. And Princess Luna is actually trying to help them get out. And then, you know, the, the ponies that are, even though they're constructs, they're, they are based off of characters that end up becoming sentient. She accidentally brings them out, too, saving the, the main six and spiking them. You never know. But that is just a theory. A pony theory. Now, um, let's take a look at this. Here's my friend code. Don't forget to add me. My friend code is in the top left-hand corner. And here we go. First, we got Shining Knight. Don't forget to add them. The friend code is right next to their name. And let's see what they've done. Luna's Bat Pony Guard could be Echo Nocturne or anyone that hasn't been written into the lore yet. You never know. Well, it looks very unorganized, very much like how mine used to be. Not to say that makes it not look good. I kind of like it. Oh, I like this path they made right here. <laughs> Admittedly, that might be my uh, favorite section. Again, it does look really nice here. I think maybe they're they're just um, they have everything randomly out, but they're gonna work on section by section of the place. I had to do that too when I did redo my entire Ponyville. Anyway, this is Shining Knight's place. Have a happy New Year and good luck to you in the campaign. Next, we got Mister Music. Don't forget to add them. Their friend code is next to their name. I love what they've done with the most epic and happy tree that has ever existed. That looks really, really cool. That, Without even looking at anything else, this might be my favorite section. The rest of it, look, it does look really nice. For the usual reasons, I like how they've integrated you know, their city with lots of forested areas and terrain that looks very pleasing. I love this section too, obviously. That just looks funny having pools of lava and snow together. <laughs> I mean, it looks cool, but it also does look funny. Uh, yeah, I, I love everything. There's uh, the hero version of Discord from an alternate universe. Technically, I guess you could say he is a hero in the primary universe too, but... He's definitely a hero in that universe, and I guess he's destroyed by um, the evil Princess Luna and Celestia. Or maybe it was one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know. I do not know, but this place looks very nice. Mr. Music, peace be with you. Have a happy new year, and good luck with the new campaign going on. We have very little time left. Let's see. I got lucky there. I accidentally activated the thing before I went to the, the person's place because I've been getting a lot of errors trying to go to all the people down this list. Okay, next is Photo Pants. Here you go, Photo Pants. And this looks very chaotic, but it, again, that doesn't mean it doesn't look good. Rarity's floricking through the snow. <laughs> I just made up a new word. I meant to say fl frolicking, not flurking. I, I guess flurking is like a German version of flark. <laughs> I can't even say the word anymore, gosh dang it. I don't know why. 
frolicking. Frolicking. I, I, I'm, I guess I'm going to have to repeat that word ten times a day to, to f for some reason, correct whatever issues are causing me not to be able to say the word. I love this. This That might sound nuts, but I, I really like the way that looks. You have a guarded special area where they're growing extremely special apples and some other things, too. They may have lots of magical powers behind them or within them. Well, from what I've seen, I, I guess the tree area is my favorite one, as crazy as that might sound. But it does look nice. Photo Pants, you did a nice job. Peace be with you. Have a happy new year and good luck to you with the new campaign. Next is Uncle Cake, maybe. Well, I, I've been getting incredibly lucky because, again, I accidentally activated it too early. Here you go, Uncle Cake. This is also very chaotic. And it's design, but that's just how it is. You get to see more of the ponies together that way, that's for sure. Applejack's all by herself over here. Wonder why. Maybe she's going to go fishing or something. I have spotted Princess Luna. She's being chased by Fluttershy from the Chrysalis universe, which she's probably trying to warn her about the invasion. But she's been scared off by the vampire bat version of Fluttershy, so she feels she is doomed no matter what. Sombra's by a pirate ship. Makes sense. It looks like Nightmare Rarity has made an allegiance with... Um, why can't I remember his name? He's one of my favorite freaking villains. <laughs> He's a red dragon and Garble. I, I, I don't know why his name escaped me. Do not know. Not concerned. Not yet. If I, if I can't move limbs anymore then i'll be concerned <laughs> okay so um it's gonna be one of the few times where i don't think i can technically pick a favorite spot but it does look nice uncle uncle cake peace be with you have a happy new year and good luck to you with the campaign that's going on right now because we don't have too much time left with it Next, we got a Pollen Cobra. Here you go, Pollen Cobra. And this place looks kind of nice. It, it's organized in a very strange way, but it looks kind of nice. This Valentine's Day section looks pretty cool. That might be my favorite section. That's kind of funny. I like this section too. Imagine if Pone Hinge had been right next to the Tree of Harmony. And there's a camping ground next to it and a changeling uh, encampment. And all the while, it's right in front of a hotel. A very fancy hotel. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they tried to keep some small sections Try to have them themed in a specific way. Yeah, the, the place down here, that, that was my favorite section, the Valentine's Day one. Anyway, Paul and Cobra, peace be with you. Have a happy new year and good luck to you with the new campaign. And now you know what time it is. So, um, we're going to talk about the Equestria Girls. I was talking to one of my viewers about Equestria Girls being one of my favorite parts about G4. And I can already hear the uproar because, you know, it wasn't the most popular thing in G4. In fact, uh, if I were to tell you that it's possible, very possible, it's my absolute favorite part of G4. Liking it even more than vanilla G4, I would be considered a heretic. <laughs> No doubt. Um, but the, the human world was just alluring to me. It was really cool seeing the human versions of them and then them also becoming human, depending on, you know, which versions of 
the main six or seven or eight or whatever, whatever the number is now you want to include. Speaking of which, um, if there is two sunset shimmers, which I'm pretty sure there isn't, I, I already went over this theory. I'm pretty sure sunset shimmer is a very unique anomaly where there is not as many as her as there are alternate universes, which is also kind of a paradox saying that because there's infinite universes. So that would technically mean there still is infinite <laughs> sunset shimmers. Yeah, it, it's a little bit crazy. But I, I have a feeling she was she came about because of two different extra dimensional travelers. Mainly, I think her mom is G primary universe G four Princess Celestia. And when she was in the human world, she met her, you know, Sunset's father. And then they had a, a child together. Possibly without him even knowing that happened. Now, it, it turns out there's leaked information. This is probably old news for some people. Leaked information about an episode that, that they had planned for Equestria Girls that never came about, unfortunately, um, where there actually is a human Sunset Shimmer, and then Sunset's going to meet her. That also would be interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing that. I uh, My only problem with it is, is um, it might be retreading familiar ground like... Uh, how cool it was seeing Sai Twi meet the original Twilight Sparkle. You would, it would be very similar to that, that event, except for apparently um, Sunset from the primary G4 universe has caused damage by uh, coming into their universe and may have grievously affected the human Sunset Shimmer's life. That would be the only different dynamic. And again, it would be pretty interesting to see. It's just, it's retreading familiar ground. So that being said, I am hoping we see G4. I have seen hints, actually. Because I, I had stopped seeing Steve, <laughs> Steve. I had stopped seeing stuff for G4. Um, but apparently, it sounds like they might might be thinking about having them cross over with G5, which kind of goes back to my other theory that um, it was the G5 versions of, um, or, sorry, it was an alternate version of the primary G4 main six that interacted with G5. Because I'm very certain, again, that it's not directly connected to um, G4 in the sense that it's the same universe definitely not an alternate universe for sure parallel universe possibly even because uh they are referenced as merchandise at least and an idea an idea of what friendship should be things are still different though enough that i feel like i'm not sold on it being the same universe going back to the other thing though it makes you wonder it since Starlight Glimmer also went into the human universe, is there a human Starlight? That would be something interesting to see, to see what that version would be like. But let's go over some funny things I found. Now, this stuff is not concrete. One of the things I'm pretty sure, certain it is fan fiction. But it's just something it would be interesting to look through. This is one of them. And it's suspect, again, if this is real or not, but it's called My Little Pony, Equestria Girls, Santiago and Boots. Santiago and Boots, also known as My Little Pony, Equestria Girls, Santiago and Boots, is an upcoming 2022 Canadian-American 3D live-action computer-animated fantasy musical horror comedy film directed by Ryan Cassie. It was the fifth installment in the Equestria Girls spinoff film franchise. It is also a crossover between San Diego's Upside Down Adventure Show which I'm not familiar with, and even though I click on the link, there's nothing there, which that's one of the reasons to be suspect of this. My Little Pony, Equestria Girls, and Goosebumps. Um, again, since we're dealing with the multiverse, I could see that, but again, this is still suspect. But the reason I'm even mentioning this is the amount of detail that went into this, and you'll see. This film was made by Clinton Productions, Allspark Pictures, Hasbro Studios, and distributed by Columbia Pictures. This film was scheduled to be released on July 29, 2022 in 3D and real ID 3D and in IMAX 3D internationally. The plot's very interesting. I'm not going to read it all. 
The film begins with Santiago opens a blue hardcover book. Inside the book, there is a picture of iPhone ringing. The camera continues down the block until it reaches the picture and transforms into a moving object. Santiago answers his iPhone while calling his friends. Santiago is his kitten form, draws a door on a drawing, stands while the, the hit house music play, plays during the opening credits. <laughs> oh, man. Opening credits. After the music ends, Santiago in his kitten form then walks away. The camera continues down the block until it reaches the picture and the picture of a door transforms into a moving ringing door. Okay, um, I, I could have swore the crossover part with the MLP characters. Okay. You, you can continue reading this on your own. Um, I... <laughs> If this is real, I don't want to spoil it for everyone. Um, funny thing is, that can't be the complete story up above because there's um, credits for cast members here that were not mentioned in that story. So technically, I wouldn't be completely spoiling it for you if I read it all. But it is an interesting read, and I wouldn't want to spoil this if this was real. But again, I'm suspicious of this while at the same time, I don't know it's possible it could be real. Um, and it's not this level of detail that makes me suspicious that it could be real. You could easily write up credits for anything and, you know, do this detail and assume it's real. What makes me kind of suspicious is that, um, where is it? It goes into detail for the production. And again, you could make up details for production but it feels really weird that they would actually do it to this detail and know the things that they mentioned in this they're going over the history of equestria girls and then you know mlp and then they go into history of what they were going to do with this crossover on february 11th 2020 2017 it was um moved yet again to december 1st 2017 due to san diego on his week vacation to salt lake city in utah on november 20 i mean 2 2017 it was moved to its 2019 release date on june 20 2018 the release date was moved to pretty sure that's a mistake in the numbers um december 25th 2022 on may 3rd 2019 due to avatar 2 Okay, that, that also is a little bit suspicious. That's one of the only other reasons why I would be suspect of this being real or not. It's really interesting for sure. And I, I absolutely love crossovers, but you just never can tell if this is real or not. 100%, I mean. I'm now seeing that part mentioning Avatar 2, which I had missed the first time. I was dead neutral over this being real or not. But um, Avatar, the series... Well, wait, which Avatar? If they're talking about James Cameron's Avatar, that series is like deadlocked in a lot of ways. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't even finish that series at all. And not that I mind because I didn't really like Avatar. And, but if they're talking about Avatar, the last airbender, I can't help you with that. I know next a little about it. I saw the live action movie. It was, it was okay. It was my most favorite thing. Could it be that I'm holding on to foolish hope that we're going to see more Equestria Girl stuff? Yeah, it's very possible. Because I, I the news for new Equestria Girl stuff crossing over, it's uh, dying down, getting lesser and lesser and lesser. And a new project thing just came out showing like four new things that are planned to come out for uh, MLP. And Equestria Girls is not one of those things now. But you never can tell. You just can't. They could surprise us. You never know. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I hope this got you interested in thinking again more about Equestria Girls. Because again, that was... It's quite possible that it was my favorite part. The characters are a little bit different. Because they are... Well, they are from different universes. So they technically are not exactly the same character. But it was just so alluring. I love how they handled all their characters in it. In the stories. But... We may have already gotten the last of it, so we got to enjoy what we got. Anyway, guys, I love you all. Peace out. Good luck to you in the new campaign, and God bless you.